Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Together along with you, the three of us, we are Markwood Ben's Breakfast Club. Welcome back to Tobacco Advent 2020, day 14. And good morning, boy. Good morning, Homer. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, also doing well. Good. Also doing well. Someone should love me enough to make me get a haircut. But <laughs> no one does, so it continues to just grow wild. Yeah, it does. I, every time, every edit... Every video I'm editing, I'm like, what was happening to my head? Oh, you should, yeah. Just and, wait till you see and this one. And it, and it just hasn't gotten better. I mean, it can't, it, for some reason, my hair's been like, it's both long, but also like real flat. And so I've got this weird bull head thing going on sometimes. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm great. Shave off your stash and you're, you're, you're a perfect Amish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think my wife, I think my wife does love me. And uh, <laughs> wants, wants me to go to a um, beard barber, um, one of those hipster places where they, they'll cut your hair and your beard and help you trim it up. The George Bruno would hook you up. You just... that, that's true. Well, I'm following his, his hair care, his current hair care regime at the moment. Um, so it's his fault. You hear that, George? You cannot put this on George. No. Why can't I? Watch me. I just did. <laughs> you hear that, George? Okay, so today, what are we smoking and from whom and all that jazz? Let's I get don't this know. going. Let's get this show on the road. We got we got a package from uh, a, a friend of the uh, of the channel, <laughs> one third of Markwood Men's Breakfast Club, you might say, Andre, and, and Andre uh, from New York is uh, contributes not only on his behalf but his father's behalf, as they did last year. Andre and I believe his dad's name is Andre. Andre and Andre. So yeah. Uh, Sent a letter to Homer and Boy with these beautiful wax seals. wax seals. This one being a pipe. That's awesome. So we don't want to break that off right away. Let's see. Quietly, beautifully, Christmas arrives. Nice. That's cool. Hope your holidays are graced with beauty, peace, and joy. Dear Homer and Boy, enclosed you will find a pair of tobaccos from the Country Squire. I was going to send uh cordial friends um my father also andre sends figgy pudding also you'll find a pair of masks my wife made and a pair of pipe tampers that i made last year i visited washington missouri as i often do i gathered wood i tend to do this uh, in interesting places so this pair was made out of fallen branches oak perhaps also included is some L.J. Peretti Thanksgiving Day. I figured you could uh, have as leftovers. Please pardon the delay in getting this to you. All the best. Merry Christmas and happy piping, Andre. Thank you very much, Andre. These are cool. Look at that. They've got pipes. They've got uh, cigars. They've got cigar cutters on them. And so many layers of fabric. Wow. All right. That's great. I'm, I'll be wearing this one at work. Oh, there's, there's, oh, there's, a, there's an ashtray on there, too. <laughs> nice. Sweet ash. Oh, mine has camel on the inside, so they won't see my mouth. All right. Let me check. Yeah, we're, we're we'll mask up here. We're good. That is nice. Cool. Oh, you know what? Best of all, they smell like pipe tobacco. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's this awesome. Really awesome. Andre, let me, thank let me see, you. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, you got a tobacco leaf on yours. Yeah? In a, in a very prominently placed pipe. Camel on That's the inside? Cool. That's cool. That, that is, is great. Cool. What a weird year it is. This is such a, a, a great and, and a helpful, <laughs> kind gift. Thank you. This is going right in the pocket. All right, so we had um, uh, uh, cordial let's, yeah, let's, let's get something smoking, and then we can take yeah. a look at those tampers. This is okay. pudding. Let's go ahead and do cordial friends today, okay. and, and we'll smoke uh, the figgy pudding, and we Thanksgiving Day later. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. So I got to meet Andre a couple years ago when I visited um, Pipe Club in, in New York City. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Nice guy and a whole really nice group. Um, it was fun because there, there were a couple, a couple in the group there that were, I don't want to say they were anti-Cobb, but I would say that they were at least unfamiliar that people really truly smoke Cobbs. Mm. Right, and so 
we had some almost some, like an urban legend or urban kind of I yeah. think so so it was, a, it was a fun conversation but most of those guys were you know very much into some really nice high-end pipes mm -hmm. and this this place where we were having our hangout was a cigar bar that had some really good food so we ate chicken wings but really high-end chicken wings um that's some kind of cheese thing too goat goat cheese or something like that it's good times that andre and dimitri mm, andre's a couple great. others cordial friends great name So, I saw two two comments about the the, the tongue and cheek fussing I made about um, about keeping pipe wet. <laughs> One was from the original commenter, pointed out that uh, yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't meant anything was meant by that. Thank you. I didn't take it anyway. Um, and the other was from somebody uh, who's new to pipe smoking and was uh, envious of of my being able to keep the pipe lit on the videos. Oh, and some of the clouds that you were getting, he was mm -hmm. commenting. Mm -hmm. So, I think that if I didn't say it then, I said this before, one of the nice things about pipe smoking is that is that just like any hobby, do it the way that you enjoy it best. And so, you know, there are best practices and, and the right way to do something. But if you enjoy it a different way, that's totally fine. I know um, from a, just experience that I don't pack my pipe as tightly as the average pipe smoker, which means it burns hotter. I get more smoke, but also burn through the tobacco faster. And, um, but it has a less tight draw as well. Um, so that's one reason why the, the, the clouds are big. It's burning hotter than uh, a lot of people smoke their pipe. Um, that's the way I enjoy it. That's the reason for that. So don't pack it as hard, I guess, um, if that's what you're, what you're after. Um, every time I pack a pipe properly, it's weird to me. <laughs> like this one I did that I can tell, I. I more work. So it uh, reminds me, this whole discussion reminds me a little bit of wood turning. Uh, whether you're turning a spindle or a bowl. Let's say you got a, a block of wood here and you're going to turn this into some sort of a spindle. There really are two, two basic techniques with your tools, but even once you have mastered the use of your tools, there are two approaches with this, those techniques. So one technique is something called scraping. And that is where, let, let's imagine this corn cob turning, scraping your cutter is coming right here at nine o'clock with the cob spinning this direction. And at, it's basically going straight down at that point. Okay. That's called scraping. And you end up with a, a fairly rough turning that you hit it with some sandpaper, you're good to go. Another technique is you, you have your tool rest and your tool much higher. And this is called shearing. And the, uh, the bevel that leads up to the tip rubs against the wood as you're turning. So you get a much finer finish left over because basically you're burnishing the wood, you're rubbing the wood with the, the, uh, the bevel. Well, I can take a spindle like this, and if I just need to get this thing done, I can very quickly hog my way down close to the final dimension and then put some finesse into it. Because, you know, if it's this big and I need it to be this big, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if I rush through and even tear some of the wood grain up right. to get down to that point. Likewise, if what I'm really interested in doing is just practicing with my tools and sharpening and practicing my sharpening, I might take that down, you know, rubbing the bevel, making a fine cut, making every cut as if I were to, if I were to stop, I was done and I'd have that nice, beautiful finish doesn't matter in the end because I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that part off and turn the next part off and so on and so on. Well, with, with pipe smoking, he smokes faster, but then he can smoke something else yeah. or he can pack his bowl, right. bowl and smoke, smoke some more of the same. Um, I'll take my time, I'll take, you know, in real life I'm taking 45 minutes to smoke a bowl. If it's what I wanna do and I'm in, I enjoy it, it, 
who's to be critical of it? If you don't get a lot of smoke or you get clouds of smoke, if you're enjoying it, who cares? That's right. So the the um, side effect of not having it packed as tightly is you don't get that that thick, um, uh, what is it, not ash, but I think this is ash, um, that is consistently kind of pushing down um, into the pipe. And so it will go out. It will go out faster. You know, I've, I've, I am in awe oh, the, of yeah, times. The embers are not kept against right. that. Yeah. I'm in awe of times that he'll put his pipe down and come back to it 10 minutes later, um, it seems like anyway, and pick it up and, and just puff, puff, and it's relit again. That's not me. I had to come to terms with the fact that that's not me and, and become comfortable with re relighting. Um, so uh, I want to look at these tampers. Speaking of tamping, and then we should uh, check out a question of the day as well. Okay. Goodness. Of the wrapping here. Do the knife? Uh, no. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. So let me show you guys. That's cool. So we got a, a spent bullet cartridge here. We could we could hang this. Andre, thank you. If if only we had took, taken everything else off the tree, this could be a cartridge in a bare tree. Mm hmm. I don't know. It doesn't feel uh, golf tee enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great, the color matches though. That's a great feel though. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm. I don't know that I would want to use this end though to. To, to scrape out the bowl, that that's yeah. that's beautiful. Did you uh, did you fire this yourself, Andre? All right. So today's question is: If you could travel anywhere after the pandemic, where would you go and why? This is from Nate in Sears Mont Maine. If I could travel anywhere, mm -hmm. where and why? It's a time travel question or a, a destination mm. question? I think it's a destination question. Oh, okay. It doesn't say any when. I mean, we, we are planning on going to Hawaii in 2021. Cool. So for realsies, Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that that, that happens. But if the sky's the limit and, and we could go anywhere and no limitations and all that. I have never been to Asia and, and find that, uh, think that that would be interesting to go with somebody who knows what's going on, knows the language in almost anywhere, you know, be it Japan or Taiwan or China or wherever. That's interesting to me. Yeah, but uh, I'll stick with Hawaii since I, I really want to make sure that happens this year. Yeah, um, I would love to go back and spend more time in Ireland, um, and would would love to do that with my family. Um, you know, I was there for a few days and saw some some of the just most beautiful natural sights, um, and just really really enjoyed that. I enjoyed visiting Scotland as well. Um, really, all of all of uh, England was great. I would do that again. Where was the Giants Causeway? Yeah, it's in Northern Ireland. Ireland, and it's it's right at the, the top point. And I mean, it is it's as picturesque as you imagine it to be in, in everything you've ever seen of Ireland. Um, the fields just beautiful. Um, that was um, you know, seeing the the ocean, but it's it's different. You know, it's it's more turbulent and. Um, and being out there it was just it was awesome it was awesome and, and you know we we expected we expected to be able to fit two or three things uh, sightseeing into that day and we got to the Giants Causeway and it was so amazing it was so beautiful that we spent the whole day there um, <laughs> and didn't see any of the other things you know we thought it was just gonna be like a, a yep uh, that's cool let's move on and it was it was not that you, you shared some pictures in one of our 
episodes, right? Didn't you? Were they were they, were they videos? Do mm. recall? I'll see if I can find that. If I can, I'll link to it down below. But uh, that really was a picturesque place that you went. Mm -hmm. and, uh, watch the video of when it was fresh in your mind. Yeah, so it was, it was really neat getting to do that. I would love to do that again. I mean, um, every, every trip I've taken there, I've really enjoyed. In a few years, I think maybe, maybe by next year, um, I think uh, Disney would be on the list. Love to take yeah. our kids to Disney. Um, they're still just, the youngest is probably just a little too young to really make it a whole day of walking a park. Um, and, and, of course, who knows what Disney looks like. Um, next year. So. Yeah, it's good. I want to go there too. It's been, a I, long, been a long time. I will say, I will say, at this point, it's not that the um, pandemic is what's preventing those things, generally speaking. You know, we, I don't have any plans to go there, haven't been setting time off or more money aside or anything. For that so it's not like it's it's COVID's darn, fault darn it. yeah. right um you know but but that would be it'd be nice to kind of escape a little bit so what do you think of cordial friends mm. we get along <laughs> yes we do yes we do who makes that i think you said um it's from the country squire country squire okay yeah. Mm, 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 mm. That's nice. You know, I, I keep getting, I'm getting little hints, subtle hints of, of chocolate. I don't know if that's supposed to be there. Because we've talked about this in the past. Almost everything we've ever smoked that claimed to be chocolate or cocoa, we don't get it. Yeah. And, and then when you do get it, it's usually kind of overwhelming. It's more of a... Mm, um, a thick casing yeah. on there. But that's got a really great flavor to it. No. All right. Well, great. Uh, what about you? Where um, would you like to go when all this is said and done? And uh, is there anything? Um, is there anything that is holding you back from from making those moves to do it? Do we need more tobacco? Uh, yeah, I th I think so. If uh, I know this, uh, some uh, have sent some in. So kind of uh, who knows where it is in transit. At this point, as of today's filming, um, we probably will be getting together one more time to film the last couple of days. So I think today we'll, we'll get to like the 19th probably of December. And so we'll have six or so videos to film. Um, filming uh, uh, on the 18th or the 19th before we will be heading out uh, to Williamsburg um, before Christmas. So uh, if there's anyone that would like to receive a ornament and a 3d printed ornament um, commemorating the 2020 tobacco advent uh, if you want to send um, a small sampling of tobacco in the to the destination below um, we would certainly appreciate that all right make it a great day we will see you tomorrow see ya